Hi there, and welcome back to the Sword and Station Loop and Grazing Trial. It's Travis here, and this is a video on the March harvest of the Grazing Trial. So at this point, the lupins have come from their drier stage, so they're recovering from the drought of summer, and they're slowly starting to regrow again from the basal, the basal shoots. So you start to see these again out of the crown, and that will be evident throughout the video as you're about to see. So the harvest date of this was the 20th of March 2014. So in the first photo here, this is the paddock that the sheep were in on the day of the harvest. Uh, this was the last day they were going to be in this paddock before they were shifted on to the one next door. And what we can see is quite a lot of material on the ground. So a lot of dead stem generally is uh, lying around and covering this bare soil surface. And we do start to see there is a little bit of regrowth from the base already. Uh, however, it uh, has been grazed reasonably heavily by the stock. Uh, and in this next photo here, you can see one of these plants a wee bit closer up. So what you're seeing is uh, no stem. So the stem's been taken away, this dead stem. And you're seeing just the petioles and also some leaves that haven't been grazed. But you're mainly seeing in the front of this photo some of the bare petiole tops. So that's had the lamina removed, which is the, uh, the true leaf, if you like. And the sheep have come along and preferentially grazed that because that does tend to hold the highest quality throughout the growing season. The digestibility of it doesn't really change, as Dr. Black pointed out in the previous video. So that, that tends to be the most heavily selected component when the flowers are not there. Flowers tend to be the first and then lamina second. Now this plant similarly has had the uh, lamina grazed away from the tops of the petioles but this one still has the true stem remaining through the middle of the plant uh, that's obviously dead and not looking too sharp anymore but hasn't bothered the sheep at all really they still go through and uh, get stuck into some of those lush green leaves and which is the the fresh regrowth for the new season you can also see there's quite a lot of uh, material on the ground. Uh, so that's a lot of these brittle stems and stuff that have been broken off by the sheep and uh, and trampled in. So that will start to be incorporated into the soil organic matter, which is very important in the high country soils because they do tend to be very poor in their soil structure. So any nutrient cycling, particularly nitrogen, is going to help to sort of break down some of this carbon that's sitting on the surface and incorporate it into the soil so that they can begin to rebuild over the coming years. Now in this photo you can see a fence line running up the middle. This is a we got a block five on the left and block one on the right. So they, they were in block five here on the left and they were about to be shifted into block one on the right. Now there is quite a big difference that you can see here between the two blocks. They have grazed the block on the left, block 5, quite heavily. And the block number 1 on the right uh, is still got a fair amount of regrowth there. Quite still a fair bit of stem sticking around. Um, and that's sort of towering above a lot of the lush green uh, bushy material, leaf material at the base. However that leaf material still is there and we'll be touching on that a wee bit later on. But because the sheep haven't been walking around uh, and doing sheepy things I suppose in the block one, uh, the stem is still standing up very erect and it hasn't been pushed over like it has in block five. Now this from a slightly different angle, the fence line is sort of through the middle of the photo. And at the front of the photo we can see the block that the sheep have been in. And at the back of the photo where the ute is, obviously, uh, you can see where the sheep are about to go into. So there's quite a big difference between the blocks. They've really got stuck into this block number five, which did have a, a 
as high, if not slightly higher yield than block one earlier in the season. So they really did get into it. Uh, and obviously now block one towering above the fence, whereas block five, it's certainly time to be shifting those sheep onto block number one so we can maintain their live weight gain. So the ewes have just come out of their long lambing time. Uh, sheep have been weaned off the mum, so it's time for them to start putting some weight back on. And they will do that by having as much good quality feed on offer as possible. Okay, now we're back into block one. So the one that the sheep are about to go on to. Uh, you can see a lot of green bushy material at the base of the plants, so that's fresh regrowth coming from the crown. Uh, however, a lot of stems still sticking up through the middle there. Uh, that hasn't been removed. That was the reproductive stem uh, from the flowering uh, and the pod stages, which were sort of through December and January. Resident species in between the plants we know they're quite heavily selected by sheep throughout the season uh, and they haven't really shown their face again since they finished their reproductive cycle. So they take a bit longer to get going and a lot of them actually tend to be annual species as well so they don't really come, you don't really see them too much uh, until the following spring. Now in this photo you can see uh, at the front of the photo it's a bit of a circle really and that is where the machine that I used to harvest these plots has gone through and it's taken that dead stem away in the previous harvest or the one before I think actually that would have been taken off in January uh, so what we can see is that uh, we've got some nice lush regrowth which we still have when the dead stems left present but this looks a lot nicer and also often the plant goes through a second flowering at times so you can see a few young flowers there sticking their heads up. And because lupins don't have a, a day length response as such, they tend to just flower when conditions are correct. Um, and in this case, they will get a second lot of flowering in before the winter hits. They won't go through a full reproductive cycle, but they will start flowering again, which means we get that nice high quality feed uh, again in autumn. And by getting rid of this higher stem, we also can allow, although probably negligible, but slightly more amounts of light into the canopy uh, to get as much autumn regrowth as possible. And this photo again just illustrates that. And these uh, plants are sort of up to about your knee height and uh, looking pretty sharp without the stems sticking out the top of them. They tend to just make them look a bit ugly more than anything else. But at this point, yeah, looking looking pretty good. Okay, so in this photo, I was just going to show you an example of how how close to the ground you should cut. So which height you should cut to if you do plan on topping to get rid of some of that ugly stem. Now you can see here uh, that the plant, I've, I've taken it off reasonably high. So now you can see my hand in the photo. And you don't really want to go much below about the height of your fingers. So if you stand your hand up on the ground like I have done, you don't want to be going below where your, your fingers come into your palm. And, and so it's sort of about two, two, three inches is about as low as you want to take them. Any lower than that, are they going to take a long time to recover or they're going to be dead? Uh, they, they, they don't like being taken off to ground level. And I'll show you that in the next photo. So in this one, you can see I really cut right into the crown of the plant, right down low, at basically at, at ground level. So you can't see any of my ugly, you can see my whole ugly hand in this photo, as opposed to the last one. And this, most plants will struggle to recover from this. It'll probably, you're likely to see quite a lot of plants in essence, if you mowed fairly big areas like this. And you, you'll just be getting some sort of crown rots, root rots, things like that. And the plant will eventually uh, die or will take a long time to recover. You can go reasonably low low every now and again. But uh, you certainly wouldn't want to make a habit of it because your stand's going to start thinning out pretty quickly. 
So in this photo, you can see you've got a couple of flowers sticking up. So this is these ones were cut, and they've started to flower again. Uh, we can see some nice, pretty flowers, the tourist attraction of uh, the Mackenzie country, sticking up from the top of the lupin plants. And obviously, we know that sheep really highly prefer the flowers. They, they select them strongly. Uh, and graze them preferentially in the sward. So yet another nice little reason why, if you if you can justify it, why you might want to top. This is just a yet again another photo of the entire block one paddock that the sheep are about to go into. Now in this photo, what I was just trying to sh gonna show you was that. With these big tall stems sticking up, the, the greener ones, not not the dead ones, you can see some dead reproductive stem in this photo, but you can also see some that are slightly greener. Now, they will produce sort of young leaves. You'll see some leaves with small petioles sticking out of those, and the sheep will graze them when they're sticking up like this. So if you went into the paddock next door, you will notice that all the stems are just bare and there's not a leaf in sight on them. And the sheep have gone along and taken those off. So what this is trying to say is that you don't, you still will get the plants growing these fresh leaves, even if you do not top them. However, it can be a little bit nicer in terms of getting rid of that dead stem when it's gone for good. And away you go into the next autumn with uh, a, a fresh clean sward and obviously capturing as much light as possible but they will go along and take these little leaves off so if I took a photo again midway through the month you probably wouldn't see any of these anymore now that sort of concludes the March harvest uh, if you enjoyed the slideshow uh, and thanks to Lincoln University again for this project and New Zealand Merino Company uh, and just as an aside to this project, this grazing trial, we have just started a new one at, at Lincoln University, uh, which great, which compares grazing of lucerne and lupin swords. So a lot, a full live weight gain trial, and also some detailed plant measurements. So we'll get back to you with some results from that later on. Uh, but for now, enjoy the enjoy your April, and we'll get back to you with another video as soon as we've done the next harvest. Thank you for listening.